so fat grafting to the breast we got a list we got seven quests seven subheadings for fat grafting the best dr stiano is topping my list of possible uk surgeons do you hear that topping the list but compared to others, I found it difficult to find examples of his breast fat transfer results. If I were to come up for a 15 minute consultation, would I be able to see before and after photos? Um, yes, you're quite right. You are, it, I haven't got many before and after photos on the website or any, probably. I, I, I don't even know. Have I got a page on fat grafting on the website? Um, I haven't got much on fat grafting on the website um, because um, basically, I don't do much fat grafting nowadays because nowadays I do cosmetic breast surgery. I love fat grafting. I think fat grafting is great and I used to do it an awful lot. And when I was in the NHS, I was uh, doing breast reconstruction after cancer and I did fat grafting all the time. Probably every week I was doing a fat grafting case and I got fantastic results and I loved it. And I thought it was a fantastic technique and it was brilliant um but now i pretty much only do cosmetic breast surgery and that's what this person's talking about cosmetic breast surgery and on paper fat grafting seems great injecting some fat from your you know tummy or somewhere and injecting into your breast no need for an implant fantastic isn't that great but in reality it is not um it is it has got its limitations and the main limitation is the volume of fat that you can inject and the reason for that, because I'll just go through, I won't go through questions one, because that's what she talks about, about how much, what's the average result we get, fat transferred, etc. So um, the volume of fat, it depends on the donor size, as in where you can take the fat from. And often patients who are wanting breast implants have got a very slim, so they haven't got much donor sites, so not much take place, places where you can take the fat from. You can usually find somewhere, tummy, thighs, something like that. Um, but number two, when you inject the fat, you don't, need to, you don't want to inject it into the breast, because if you get, fat necrosis if the fat dies you get calcifications and you know pretty i think the radiographers and the radiologists are pretty good at knowing what cal dead fat is as opposed to breast cancer but it is a bit of a worry having calcifications within the breast so you you inject the fat into the layer above the breast so from the skin to the breast and beneath the breast so the breast and the muscle so you're trying to inject the fat around the breast so you're limited to where you can inject the breast because again uh, inject the fat because again people who are requesting this have usually got small breasts that's why they want breast enlargement and so that volume of space where you can put it is limited and each piece of fat needs to be surrounded by healthy tissue otherwise it will die so it has to be surrounded by healthy fat so it's, it takes quite a long time you have to inject very small aliquots of fat in it takes quite a long time and the results are subtle that's the thing i mean i have done it and i have done it recently but the results are subtle and so i really do it in cases of asymmetry if you're focusing on one breast or um in if there's sort of um contour deformities contour defects or if there's a knuckle of an implant or you can see ripples of an implant or something like that if there's a problem that you need to get some extra cut cover fat grafting is very good but the results are subtle so for cosmetic breast augmentations the results are subtle um it's less than a cup size and what you often have to do with patients is look at before and after photos quite closely next to each other and you can see a difference but I always think it's always you're always in a bit of a bad place if you're having to sit there with a patient with a before and after photos, sort of analyze it to convince them that they've got um, a good result. So, um, you know, I think it is subtle. It is a good thing on paper. It's great because um, because it's you don't have to have the long term effects of implants. But because it's subtle, it often has to be, often has to be repeated. It is uh, expensive. So, um, you know, it's not cheap. And so you have to be aware what you're going to get and if you that you're going to get um, uh, subtle results. As long as you're happy, you know, with that and getting it repeated and things, then fine. But in my experience, um, you know, it's hard to beat implants. You know, implants, you can get a 250cc, 300cc implant off the shelf, put it in, takes an hour, fine. With fat grafting, one or 200 cc's is a lot, and that's total. So that means 50 to 100 cc's per breast. You know, you get a 250 cc implant straight away, that's 500 cc's very easily, whereas that would be five, potentially five operations with fat grafting, each of which costs several thousand pounds. So it is a good thing, it is fantastic um, uh, uh, technique, 
I uh, used to do it a lot. I don't do it so much now because I do cosmetic augmentation. You can't see many photos on my website because I haven't got many cases for cosmetic augmentations. My cases are asymmetries, are breast reconstructions, um, because I talk like this to patients when they come to ask me for fat grafting. And, um, you know, I try and be realistic about the results that I can achieve. So, yeah, it's fantastic to hear that I'm top of, topping the list of UK surgeons, but I'm sorry that I'm not being that positive about it. I'm just trying to be realistic about my uh, experience with it. Um, so that's where I'm at, I'm at with it. You know, happy to talk about it, happy to do it, but you've got to be realistic about what you can achieve. Um, the other the same page about uh, mild to moderate pex, pectus excavatum, pectus excavatum, is a, a defect in the sternum in the sternum in the rib cage it's a it's a deficit in the rib cage um and uh, it's a very good technique for that so um you can we used to well people still do use uh, custom made silicone prostheses to to uh, fill that defect uh, but fat grafting is a very good alternative because the complications of uh, silicone implants are because these are not sort of like breast implants they're like solid silicone implants which are custom made you know based on a ct scan uh they can migrate they can you can feel the edges and things like that so they can cause problems the other thing for pectus excavatum is thoracic surgery that wouldn't be a plastic surgeon that'd be a thoracic surgeon um which is very good as well so i think that's a very good option if you've got pectus excavatum there are a few options you should probably see a thoracic surgeon to see about um uh, thoracic surgery but um fat grafting is an excellent option and that would just be to fill the pectus um obviously sometimes patients not obviously but sometimes patients with pectus excavatum have breast implants don't have the pectus addressed and just accept it and just have breast implants to enhance their breasts and you know that's that's possible you've got to be careful sometimes because the chest wall can be tilted so when you enhance the breast when the chest wall is tilted sometimes you can enhance an asymmetry you know like a ship going off course yeah it can make the sort of nipples look a bit less level and you know if, if they're slightly tilted and you put implants in so these things need to be aware of um yeah how common a calcification not that common uh how often do you see patients retain little to none of the fat cells in the long run time none is uncommon but little is is common it's often subtle as i say the results um and will the 200 pounds consultation fee be redeem redeemable against the cost of surgery? No, mm, no, it's not. Um, but we will refund the surgery if we can't help. I mean, refund the fee, 200 pounds. So I don't really want to take a consultation fee if I can't help. So um, we do our satisfaction guarantee. Um, 